When it gets the other tires on, wait, wait, you can do that. I'm not dressed for it anyway. What do you have to be dressed in? What do you have to be wearing to get your picture taken with that? Oh, a green outfit and my just spreaders and stuff like that. Oh. Is that for it? Yes, she. Well, that's a little close, isn't it? Is that your response to the senior medical officer? Hospital CEO, obese surgery, I said, well, they're all the same person, so I want to take them out just for face surgery. Fine, that is fine, because hospital CEO, there's no such thing. Yeah, that's right. I like the way you treat each other at work. <laughs> <laughs> the church, this is the steeple. Open the door and see all the people. Show Daddy how to do that with your hands. Here is the church. Hold your hands like that first. Then put the steeple up. Put the steeple up. And then open the door and see all the people. So hold it. So hold this. So hold it. Put it like this first. And you put them like that. And then you put them like that. And then, up like that. And that's the home. That's the house. So you want to open the door, you ready? Are you going to open the door? <laughs> yes, Thomas, I understand. Why is the light always flicking on and off? No, this is on manual. Oh, so what, Linda? It's a letter set, you know, for the different kinds of writing you can pan in on the writing. Oh, hey, 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 right. You want to see artists at work? Yes. Making snow. And it gives you all this kind of writing. Actually, it's for you to buy a letter set, but it gives you all the different... And they'll, they have the whole alphabet down there in capitals and in small letters. So I can just copy it. Did Scott have a letter set? Book? I don't know. Yeah, it's quite a big book. Kit. Yeah, it's a thick book. All it is is the different things you can get mm -hmm. from letter set. All the different kinds of writing. Mm -hmm. But I don't know the technique, Wendy. That's right. So tell me. <laughs> well, I can't tell you. Yes, like, you can. Not in words. I got it. We're not going to talk about it. going. <laughs> hey. <laughs> What's that thing you've got? That's right? a... Oh, that's right. Little did we know what was waiting for us. Carolyn, did you see the sign right there? The Hanks are coming. Hi ho, hi ho. Right up there on the. Right here, Carolyn. Is that our name up there? Hi. Hi. March the 5th, 1990. There's a nice clock. Oh, I need a clock too. Okay, I'll get this one. We're at the Eaton Center in downtown Victoria. The 3rd of August, 1990. And this is sitting there. Carpenter and the Yeah, that's right. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Your face is going to freeze like that. <laughs> Pocket man. The new best. Two. Two? No, one. Oh, one. Right. Okay. One. Two. Two. Good. It is. Three. No. Now, there's something in the back here. Oh, four. Four. All right. Five. Six. Take it See, off. there's my glasses, right? Well, that was only a couple of dollars. Well, I need another one because here are my, there are my sunglasses. Oh, all right. I'll get you another crushed you rat goodies. I almost did buy another. We could have got one today. By September pay. 1990. Right. Is it any good? 28 years of dedicated service. That's right, Captain Hank. Right. Here I am, mm -hmm. starting life all over again. Hoping that you bought another house. The house, we hope. Cheers, Margie. This at 11.30 in the morning, drinking champagne. Yeah, well, <laughs> don't do this well. No. Love it. Good shit, too. <laughs> First of all, welcome everyone to the celebration of life, uh, the life of David Hanks. David himself wanted this event to be called a celebration right from the start, and I'm thankful he was able to contribute to his own ceremony. Preparation for this day became a project for him, and every chance he got, he worked steadily to provide insights and ideas to be included here. In his life, David only felt comfortable when he had a project on the go, and he always enjoyed being productive. It turned out to be a blessing that he was given the time to contribute right up until the end of his earthly life. So he, he did live right up until he was no longer able to, you know, to write. I especially want to welcome David himself to this celebration, as I have it on high authority that spirit beings almost always attend their own ceremony. I know that perhaps not everyone believes in the idea that there may be a continuation of consciousness, but it is my firm belief, and the belief of David himself, that this is the case. To David himself, I'll say this. It's the people gathered here, and those who could not attend, who send their love, and the sincere wish for the continued success in your new existence. Um, Much of what uh, is being talked about here today in the pictures center around his accomplishments on this planet, but it should not be forgotten that his influence is far greater in its effect upon ourselves, and many elements of David Hanks live on. It's not entirely appropriate, therefore, to speak of him solely in the past tense. If you are present today, it is because there is some aspect of him which lives through you. I urge you to project into the world these aspects, 
and it will be as if Davy himself uh, never left. As much as I knew of the man, I was able to learn a great deal by reading the hundred odd pages that were written over the past three months. His output during that time exceeded my own many times over, and it contains both his excellent record keeping of actual events, along with very deep observation of his beliefs, and his thoughts on dying. What a wonderful opportunity it is to read such an honest text. There may be some of you that you know get that up, get that chance. David truly believed that death is not a door closing, but one opening into what he called the great adventure. He used uh, science even to demonstrate this principle, saying everything is made of energy. Energy can never be created or destroyed. It can only be converted into other forms. Well, David, <clears throat> compassion and moral integrity were very much alive, and both are deserving of cultivation if there, ever, if there is ever to be peace in this land. David was personally concerned with the fate of the inhabitants of this planet, and he never ceased to have hope that people would come to their senses, cease fighting wars, and instead begin to look after the needs of humanity. He often carried the weight of the world on his shoulders, and his choice of role in the Canadian Armed Forces was an apt one. He could never have been a common soldier, but instead decided to be a frontline medic. His desire to assist the lives of others plays out in everything he did. So, com so compassionately, so compassionate was he toward living things <coughs> that he has been observed nursing sick laying chickens back to health. This often included kissing the deer hens to sleep at night. <laughs> <coughs> During such a time as this, it's perhaps difficult to, to ask why me, or indeed why Davy, but the man himself never asked this. He was more apt, apt to ask why not me. I hope you can relate to the wisdom of this approach, because it is evidence of a healthy acceptance of reality. It was almost entirely due to his relative comfort with the notion of his own death, which helped his whole family deal with the events as they unfolded. David understood the importance of accepting a realistic approach to any occurrence, and he had the discipline to make sure that he continued to focus on the important aspects <coughs> of life. Dave was strong in every sense of the word. He held strong convictions. Despite 20 years of severe back problems, he was as strong as a horse. Attempts to dissuade him from doing heavy work have only been successful in very recent times. David's approach to parenting was something I've learned a great deal from. He never forced his authority upon me, which allowed us to see each other as nothing less than equals. The only time he did exercise his parental control was an event which changed my life for the better and forever. He presented his position with such clarity and truthfulness that I was unable to deny the wisdom of his point of view. Following this event, all was immediately forgotten, and there was never an instant of animosity between the two of us. I would like nothing better than than to be as solid a stepfather to Aisha as Davy was to me. Um, briefly, I want to talk about uh, Mum and, and Davy. I won't get too into it because Mum can speak uh, directly to that. Davy was madly and deeply in love with my mother. I witnessed him sh show this in a myriad of ways. Of all the people in this world, Davy was most loyal to Margie. His commitment was unusually strong and all-consuming. Recent writings show repeatedly that he considers the relationship to have been one of destiny and operating under the influence of fate. David chose not to clutter his mind with the rituals of institutionalized belief. He practiced his religion daily and in his daily activities, taking delight in the beauty found within nature. It was his meditation which comes from the attention to detail and the sincere wish of the triumph of righteousness. He almost never discussed his beliefs, but rather he was a perfect example of them. More recently, he said to me that not a day would go by without him having some reason to give thanks and praise. He spoke directly with the Creator, and the Creator spoke directly to and through him. He was silently aware of his own greatness but never allowed pride to enter into his transactions with this world. 
He wanted it stated clearly and definitively that we all must maintain our dignity in the face of opposition and renew our faith in humanity every day. Despite the destructive goings on of this earth, there should be room for hope in every human heart. And it takes only one person to become fully enlightened to ease the suffering of this entire planet. I can find no reason whatsoever that we cannot use Davy as a perfect example of this principle. As far as I can tell, Davy was never found to have entered into controversy, engaged in hypocritical behavior. He appeared to live entirely in his own conscious, conscience and set a good example for others. On the subject of physical pain, Davy regrettably has much to say and he was a high authority on the topic. His near constant struggle with back pain dictated that when he was up, he spent a great deal of time attending to the needs of his close family members. When he was up, he was fantastically prolific and easily output more work than those without such a handicap. When it came to building something, Davy's Bakshi is a hundred times better than most of our best of efforts. Anyone who owns a potato and onion bin had better put it in your will, as it was made to last no less than 200 years. When he was in business, he continually lost money on his creations due to the amount of effort involved. But this was no loss to him, because he allowed himself to be proud of only building things which would stand the test of time. And he was only too happy to give away those items to others. One regret that Davy wished said, which surfaces in Davy's journal, is how sorry he was for not being able, not being available during family events and get-togethers. He wished it to be stated that it was never his intention to make any of you think that your presence was not welcome, and that indeed he very much wished to spend more time with the crowd plan, both individually and in a larger group. Davy had no other family on the West Coast. As far as he was concerned, you were it. Um, throughout his life, Davy was most interested in being the following. A devoted husband, a full-time father, a visual artist, a highly trained medic, a fast-learning martial arts apprentice, a prospector, a carpenter, a world traveler, a peacekeeper, and a believer in a power greater than any on this earth. I encourage you to have a look at the picture boards as examples of his interests. Davy chose most of these pictures himself uh, from thousands of slides taken from all over the place. And uh, many of the trips in particular, he uh, felt strongly impacted his, uh, his life in later time. I want to thank every person here for taking the time to reflect on the enduring qualities of the man. Thank you for the support you've given the family during these times. Your efforts will not go unnoticed.